from NetNews Ledger on the, uh, the emergency child meeting last week. Yeah. What do you think is going to come as a second step from that? Well, the second step that should come, you got to fix the uh, the one system where there's still discrimination, and that's the on-reserve child and family service system. Uh, you have three Canadian Human Rights Tribunal decisions that are binding on the Crown, on the federal government, to fix it. There's still uh, discrimination because there's inadequate financial resources in that system. So you have a federal budget coming up. So we said our job as AFN, my job as National Chief, is to push to make sure that there's enough resources in that federal budget to end discrimination. So that's one piece. So uh, hopefully there's going to be enough resources to fix that system. At the, uh, on the same time, you have 40,000 First Nations children in provincial care. And so that's the other system that has to be fixed. And so these two systems have to communicate and collaborate and talk. You know, they got to start sharing data. they got to start sharing case management issues and systems. they got to have more cross-culturally based training for their, their workers on both systems, right? And so it's almost like you need 13 bilats or 13 trilateral systems in every province and territory set up between the feds, province, and First Nations leadership. That's what has to happen next in terms of next steps. And then at the same time, the ultimate goal will be First Nations Child and Family Services legislation under First Nations law, First Nations jurisdiction, in order to make sure that the priority is keeping children in their homes, in their communities, and their families. So there's one, two, step, three steps that have to happen. In term, I mean, there, there's already First Nations Child and Family Services that exist in Ontario. What is that? Mm -hmm. What role do they have to play in, in reforming? Well, they that? should be part of the system, part of the process when those tables are set up in Ontario. But they've got the expertise. I just want to make sure that the Ontario government sits with the chiefs and leadership from across Ontario. There's 133 chiefs. You got Child and Family Service agencies, so they're part of the answer, no question. There should be those trilateral tables set up so those dialogue can happen. What happened though, with in terms of them offering customary care? Um, services for for communities and, for, and families. Good morning, Chiefs. How will, Alex, how, Alex. How, will, how will this change that? Um, in terms of the protection services that they here, offer but, right now. Well, again, you fix the child and family service system through First Nations laws, First Nations jurisdictions respect it. The objective is to keep the children in their home, right? You want to make sure that those precious resources are, are spent where they should be most effective, keeping children in their families and homes and their communities. So that work's got to be ongoing. But you have to have monies to fix the on-reserve because there's discrimination, not enough resources. But there's 40,000 children in provincial care. So you have to have trilateral processes set up in every 13 jurisdictions where First Nations people are involved. So that's what's got to happen. Okay? What else? What are the biggest hurdles, I guess, at this point coming out of that meeting then and achieving those goals? Formalizing the relationship in every province and territory. That's one of the biggest things. So that's why in the Premier's here tomorrow, I encourage the Chiefs to ask that question. Where is our bilateral process here to fix the child welfare system in Ontario? Right? That has to happen. Formalize that process, bring all these issues and concerns to that table. And if they have a table, make sure it's respectful of First Nations jurisdiction. And, and what table? Is, it, is, this, is this a table that, that can produce, I guess, actions? Yeah, that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah, exactly. During your talk, you mentioned, uh, the, the, I guess, the new fiscal agreement. You seem to yep. drive home that, that point. Why was that uh, so important to... Well, it's to so important. We've had a 2% funding cap for 20 years. Um, you know, the, the feds have put 8.4 billion two years ago and last year 3.4 billion. The gap is so huge. You have to make greater investments in education and housing and water and training and skills training for First Nations people. The United Nations Human Development Index has said to Canada, you're rated sixth, high up quality of life. You apply the same indices to our people, we're 63rd. So it's sixth versus 63rd. So you need long term sustainable investments in all those uh, key determinants of health. That's the whole objective. So you have to look at a, a, a a new fiscal arrangement with the Crown. And uh, you also have to fix the bureaucracies that are there to become more effective and efficient so those resources get out of government's hands into First Nations government hands so they can have a real meaningful impact on the ground. So the new fiscal relationship is one of the priorities. Going forward, we're going to look at language legislation to revitalize our languages. We're going to look at legislation to implement the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, hopefully a new fiscal framework agreement, and then a clear policy to fix the comprehensive claims policy, the spec claims policy, additions to reserve policy, and the inherent right to self-government policy. Currently those policies are based on termination of rights and title, not recognition. So there's a whole process that has to be fixed there too. So lots of work going forward.